everyone, welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to have a chat to you guys today. So I've got my drink and we are just gonna sit here and have a little chat. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to hit subscribe. This is part of the minimalism series of videos. So we touch on, you know, physical goods and then living with people who are minimalist. And then I'm going to start focusing more on this whole lifestyle sort of thing as well. So I'll have a link to that playlist in the description box. So in this video I really wanted to discuss social media and I know I put a lot of my life online and I do make some income from that like you know Instagram and YouTube and all of that sort of thing but I still think it is really really important to take a break. Don't get me wrong I think being connected is awesome it's great that you can contact people from around the world I know people that I would have never known unless I was on social media and it's just so cool to be able to make these connections everywhere and establish friendships that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to. Personally, I find that sometimes I need to just take a break. Recently, like today was the first day in four days that I've logged into any of my social media. Uh, it's probably not much for some people, but for someone whose life is mostly lived online, it was a fair bit of time. I decided that I was tired, like I was tired of reading hate comments, I was tired of, you know, putting up with other people's opinions when I wanted to make something and other people didn't like it, and I was just like, look, I need to reset, I need to take some time for myself, I need to re-establish what I want to do, why I'm doing this, and stop the other voices from getting in so much. Because that's one thing I have noticed, it's like, is this really your opinion on a product, or did someone tell you that? That's why social media marketing works so brilliantly. You're getting an opinion from someone, you're hearing them say it's good, and that reinstates in you that the product is probably good. That's why I'm so picky about what I take on. I feel like an opinion is definitely worth something and with social media you have to be careful is it still your own voice you're listening to or are you being drowned out by all these other people? Are you trying to compete with other people? Um, are you pushing down your own work and looking at other people's thinking it's way better than your own? Like what's going on? So that's why every few months I like to take at least one or two days offline just completely offline like I'll still use the internet for my assignments and things like that but I just don't want to touch any social media and trust me like the first couple of times you do this your friends will be like are you okay why are you ignoring me do you hate me like if you have friends like that just warn them I kind of just like log off and then I come back in a few days I'm like hey Sorry, I wasn't online. So in this video, I'm just gonna give you a few of my tips on how to detox yourself from social media and when you do get back online, some things you can do just to clear up your profiles, minimize them, that sort of thing. The first step is obviously to cut everything off. Just log out of all of your accounts. Um, I had people actually messaging me, like I get this a lot with like kids still in school or college and they're like, how do I get my assignment done? I'm so distracted. I'm like, log off. <laughs> Seriously, just log off. So just get yourself out of all your accounts. If there's any loose ends that need tying up, do that beforehand. Like message someone and be like, hey, I'm going offline for a few days. Don't message me here, text me instead, blah, blah, blah. I know there's probably some people who think it's quite an arbitrary video to make, but I feel like it's really important because I know people who are younger than myself who are just always online. They're always connected and they always have been because that's how that generation grew up. I am sort of halfway between that generation and the last and that I was never really online for much of my childhood on social media. And then when we became like 9, 10 years old, that's when everything started to ramp up a lot. So with the staying offline, you'll find that you go to check your phone so many times or your computer, you're like, oh, I'm just going to check this. And you're like, oh, wait, I'm logged out. Keeping it logged out is the best way to stop using it. If you just close the app, I guarantee that you will open it again. It's just a subconscious habit that you have. You'll just go to check it and then you'll be back online again. So just log everything out and find something else to do, like maybe you've got a heap of work that you have to catch up on, you've got some assignments to do, you wanna go somewhere, go and do those things and do them without being logged in. Take the photos if you wanna take the photos, but don't post anything, you don't need to post anything. Even now when I do it, even though, you know, so many times before I've done the whole lockout for a few days at a time, I'll still go to the habit of like checking my Instagram and I'm like, stop. <laughs> So it's something that I guess eventually you'll get used to because all my other accounts I remembered that they were all locked out but Instagram was my one, I just kept going to check it. A couple of years ago when I did a psychology assignment about being connected and social media and all of that sort of thing, I correlated the mobile phone to being like a social umbilical cord and I read so many studies that were actually saying that when they separated people from their mobile phones they had really bad anxiety and it's not uncommon. So what I decided to do for myself, this is when I was working like a normal office job, is I'd go to work and I'd leave my phone at home all day and it was crazy how much university work I got done in all my spare little pockets of breaks during the day because I wasn't checking my phone. But if you are logged out and you do start to feel anxious, that's definitely normal, like that is 
documented, there is scientific proof that that happens to people when you log out and when you're disconnected. When I do decide that I want to log back in, there is a couple of steps that I like to go through just to declutter my phone and my social media a little bit. I have done a video in the past on how to declutter your digital life, like uh, I think I focus mostly on the computer, like files and that sort of thing, but this is specifically what I do in relation to social media. I'm going to include my phone as like my standard phone is part of that as well. So first off, I like to open up the phone part of my mobile, you know, what it was originally designed for. So just go through and get rid of the contacts you don't need anymore and then move on to calls and I like to just clear out my recent calls list. And then I like to jump into my message inbox and go through and just delete message conversations. I like to keep that either empty if I can or if I have conversations that were still ongoing, like text message conversations that were ongoing or someone has to reply to something, I just leave those ones. But if I can get it empty, I, I do. Next, if you aren't doing it already with your emails, try and get down to, you might have heard of the phrase before, inbox zero, and it's to try and get yourself super organized with your emails so that your inbox is perpetually sitting on zero by the end of the day. You'll get emails come in throughout the day, sort them as soon as you can. If you can reply to emails within, you know, like 10 seconds or a minute, just like do it. Shoot off your short replies, get them out of the way, get them done. Um, get your inbox back to zero as soon as you can. When you start to let it creep out of control, that's when you end up with like a thousand unread messages. Next, I like to jump onto Facebook and do a little bit of a Facebook clean out. So I'll normally start with my photos and I go through and delete my old photos. That way no one can go and find embarrassing old pictures of you, which is so it's like double handy. But I like to just like reduce all the stuff that's online. I don't know why I've always done it. I used to be obsessive about only having, I think it was two profile pictures. Like I'd never have more than two sitting in the album. I don't know. Now I just go in and clear it out periodically. I'll just delete people who post things that I find like super aggressive or really mean or you know really derogatory. Just stuff that I don't want to see. And even if it's people that I knew from like years and years and years like primary school I'm like why are you on here? We don't talk. Like one of us is just looking at each other's lives and it's just weird. So I like to get people like that out of my friends list and just leave my profile open for following. Of course, if you're more private, you can just change your privacy settings and you can have your profile on private. I also then like to go through my groups. I'm not in many groups, but sometimes people add me to like those shop and swap type groups and I always remove myself from those. If you go through and have a look, you'll probably find that you're actually a member of more groups than you thought because people can just add you to group pages. Then I like to jump onto Instagram. Instagram clean out is super easy and I just delete some photos that I feel don't fit my theme anymore and I just unfollow some accounts that are usually inactive. Like I follow a fair few people on there, but I just go through and unfollow ones that haven't posted in a long time. So a good way to streamline all your news feeds on everything, so YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, is to unfollow or unsubscribe from people who you are not enjoying anymore. If you don't want to see it, like, what's the point of it just, like, scrolling up in your feed? So I think a big part of decluttering what you're seeing when you are logging into social media is unfollowing or unsubscribing from people. Another awesome thing that you can do is you can find extensions for your browser to block any Kardashian. It's amazing. Um, so anytime the name Kardashian comes up, it will replace it with something or remove it depending on which extension you have. What is the name of mine? I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'll try and link something in the description box for you guys. But similarly with things like that, I'm not interested and I don't want to see that. And if it's popping up on your Facebook, like, you know, this and that and the other or news articles that you really don't care, like stuff that's not news. Uh, there is a little drop down arrow and you can say see less of this and your personal Facebook algorithm will start to calculate that you want to see less of that. It is kind of a lengthy process to do that and I mean it's probably only important if you're online a lot. If you're not online, I wouldn't be bothered. Another thing that you might need to do is delete some old inactive profiles, things you're not using anymore. Do you have an ancient Pinterest account that you haven't pinned on? Do you have a LinkedIn profile from six years ago that says you still work at Subway? I don't know. If you haven't used it in six months, you're probably not going to use it again. You won't miss it. Another thing that I really, really love to do is make sure that all of my notifications are turned off for most of my social media. I've muted my notifications for Facebook and for Instagram and for Twitter. Uh, I think I only have a few notifications for YouTube because there's a couple of YouTube accounts that I really want to see their videos when they go live. So I make sure that I've got like my like a little bell symbol it like sends you a notification when they upload so I've got a couple of YouTube accounts that I have the notifications on for other than that I've got some messenger notifications and that's about it because I don't want to be disturbed all the time by 
you know, something coming through on Instagram or seeing likes or like a Facebook notification because to me, I have so many more important things that I would rather be doing than checking that all the time. I remember back when I first started uni, like, because I have had my notifications switched off for years now, but when I first started at uni, I was getting so distracted and I'd be like reading that. This was when I was doing photography, like back in the day. And I'd be sitting there reading some of the material that we had to read and I'd be like, notification, notification. I'm like, I just, I just have to check this. Like, I just have to check it. And it is really distracting. So they're just a few little pointers from me, but I hope they're able to help you out a little bit. Like I was saying at the start of this video, it's awesome to be connected and everything, but every now and again, I think it's a really good idea to give yourself a little bit of a break. Remember who you are, remember what you enjoy, and don't let other people's opinions cloud your judgment all the time. If you haven't tried it before, give yourself even like one or two days just logged off being present with the people around you and being present and fully involved in what you're working in, whether that's I don't know, schoolwork or an art project or something, just allow yourself to be present and in the moment. I know whenever I do this, I feel like I've been so productive in my days off and I also feel super refreshed, like other people's judgments don't push on me as much as they did when I spent way too long online. If you're planning on giving yourself a little social media detox, leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you guys. But as for now, I hope you guys are having a lovely day or night or whatever time it is where you are and I will catch you in my next video. Bye.